There is one more, one last component that we need to install before we can tackle uh, GitLab itself, and that component is Cert Manager. As you can probably guess from the name, Cert Manager will manage certificates. So this is because part of GitLab, we have a container registry and container registries need to have valid TLS certificates. I said it earlier, I will probably say it again later, but we really need to have valid TLS search for the registry. Um, there are some hacks around it, but they are really not pretty and I don't want to go there. So we will have valid certificates on the registry. Cert Manager is going to help us because we are going to set it up to obtain certificates for us from Let's Encrypt. Uh, Cert Manager is also, in my opinion, a really good example of what an operator should look like on Kubernetes. It follows a bunch of design principles and best practices, so it's always a good idea to see uh, what that looks like. So, how, what's the general idea here? We need to install Cert Manager and then we need to configure it, and we configure it by creating issuers. An issuer is basically a configuration to obtain a certificate. So for instance, you could have an issuer to issue self-signed certificates. You could have an issuer to obtain certificates from Let's Encrypt. You could have an issuer to obtain certificates from Vault. You could have multiple issuers side by side. You can even have multiple similar issuers side by side. You know, if you have, uh, actually we're going to show that because we will have Let's Encrypt staging and production. Um, so this is how we configure Let's Encrypt, like by creating these issuers. So let's do that. Um, first, to install Cert Manager, guess what? We're going to use Helm, and just like before, we're going to install Cert Manager in its own namespace. We are going to call the release Cert Manager. The namespace is going Cert Manager. Well, by now, I guess you you know these things because I've been doing that for pretty much everything that I installed on the cluster so far. And again, I'm using this trick where instead of doing Helm repo add, I'm passing the repo as a flag to Helm install. So I do Helm install dash dash repo. All right, let's install that. Uh, So this is going to get the search manager chart uh, and it's going to evaluate the templates content they're in. It's going to apply these templates. And so it's going to take maybe a minute and then we will have search manager up and running on the cluster. Um, now, as it reminds us, in order to issue certificates, you need to set up a cluster issuer, for instance, by creating a Let's Encrypt staging issuer. All right, so let's see how we do that. This is an example um, of a cluster issuer for Let's Encrypt staging. So what do we need? Well, basically it's configured with, um, here we have the address for the Let's Encrypt API and this is the address of the staging one. And then we need to pass an email address and actually you need to uh, update that email address when we will use real certificates. Otherwise, if you pass an address with example.com, Let's Encrypt is going to tell you, no, 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 that doesn't work. You need to give a real email address. That email address will be used to send you reminders to, um, to renew the certificates. Uh, right, so uh, let's get that file. So I've put the link here if you want to download that file, but you can also just copy paste that if you'd like. So let's do that. Um, so let's see. Uh, that's uh, issuer.yaml, paste that, and I'm going to update my email address right there to make sure I don't forget later. Uh, and then I'm going to kubectl apply that thing. Okay, and it's telling me cluster issuer created. By the way, you might wonder, wait a minute, you're still in that Cube Prometheus stack namespace. Um, did you perhaps create that 
cluster issuer in the wrong namespace or something? Like what's going on here? Well, no, because as you might guess from the name, the cluster issuer is cluster scope. So the cluster issuer does not exist in the namespace. It exists for the whole cluster. So it doesn't matter in which namespace I am when I create that object. Okay, uh, now I can check that it's here with uh, kubectl get cluster issuer. Okay, I have let's encrypt staging. It's ready. Awesome. By the way, if you see ready false, that happens, for instance, when the email address is invalid or something like that happens. Um, all right, now how do we use that? Well, there are multiple ways to use Cert Manager. First, let's see the manual method, the, me the method where I create a special resource called a certificate. So that's basically, you know, a, a nice way to tell Cert Manager, hey, can you please get me a certificate for that particular name? And then Cert Manager will do its thing, basically. So we're going to try that. So again, I have this YAML here. Uh, so let's create certificate.yaml. Paste that. And here I'm going to put the name. So let's say um, test cert dot cloud native dot party. Of course, make sure to use your domain here because it won't work with mine and that will rely on the ingress controller and the external DNS integration that we've set up before. DNS names, also test cert.cloudnative.party. And this says you use the let's encrypt staging um, cluster issuer. Now, if you wonder, hey, why do we need to repeat like this, uh, uh, this name like three times, you know, like test cert.cloudnative.party, like here, there, and there. This is going to be the name of that certificate object. This could be anything you want. It doesn't matter as long as it's a valid Kubernetes resource name. This is going to be the name of the secret where cert manager will store the TLS key and TLS cert. Again, you can put anything you want as long as it's a valid Kubernetes resource name. And finally, DNS names, that's the names, well, the name or names, plural, for which let's um, Cert Manager will obtain the certificate with Let's Encrypt. Uh, here, I just put that name and that one needs to be a valid DNS name, of course. And here, once again, I used my good old boring predictable technique and I'm using the same name everywhere so that, you know, when I see that secret, I can immediately remember, ah, yes, that's the TLS key and cert for that domain. And same thing when I see that certificate object. Now, the certificate lives in a namespace. So before I create that object, I will head back to the default namespace. Now I do kubectl apply certificate YAML. And uh, then what's going to happen is that after a few seconds, you can see that we have this ingress that was created like CM, SCME, HTTP solver. What is this about? Well, if we, okay, let's look just at this one, please. Yes. So this is an ingress that was created by Cert Manager. Uh, so the idea, um, and here I, I'm not going to give you a full lecture on Let's Encrypt and the SCME protocol, but the idea is that we are asking Let's Encrypt, hey, I would like a certificate for testcert.cloudnative.party. And Let's Encrypt is going to tell us all right, well, then you have to prove to me that you really own that name, like that address. And to prove it, you are going to put a specific secret file, like a kind of, a, they call that a challenge, at that particular address. So uh, then let, Let's Encrypt is going to access this, you know, like test party. 
slash well-known ACME challenge, etc., etc. Uh, so it's going to try and access that uh, to verify the ownership of that domain. So this is going to take a few minutes because we have to wait until uh, the DNS record is up and then uh, once cert manager is sure that this works correctly, then it's going to knock at Let's Encrypt again to tell it to verify that challenge. And uh, yeah, that, that's going to take a few minutes. Um, so just to make sure that everything is in shape, I'm going to have a look uh, at my DNS records here uh, on Linode. And yep, I can see that I have a test cert record right there. So now it's probably just going to take a minute or two before this works. So I suggest we just give it a little bit of time and come back in a few minutes. And by then, hopefully we will have our certificate. So we come back a little bit later. Uh, when I did that test, it took six minutes between the creation of the ingress and the whole, you know, the completion of, of the HTTP challenge. And now if I come back here, you can see that this um, CA CME HTTP solver is gone. Um, and if I look at the secrets, I have a secret test cert dot cloud native dot party of type Kubernetes IoT LS that has the certificate um, that I can now use with an ingress. So speaking of which, how do we use that uh, with an ingress? Well, uh, this will look like this. So let's say, okay, I need something, I need to expose something, right? Um, let's say that good old Nginx again. So let's create an ingress. Let's call it test cert and let's add a rule. So the rule is going to be test cert dot cloud native body slash star that should go to web on port 80. And then we add comma and some options. And here we put TLS equal and the name of the TLS secret. So we do that and then we get that ingress here and you can see a little hint here it says like ports 443 so yep we got https now let's try this okay test cert okay let's try with https and then we get that big warning so we're like hmm what's going on now why why is this not working correctly let's look in advanced and then we see error unknown issuer. Let me zoom that a little bit. View unknown issuer. Let's look at that certificate. And in that certificate, I see staging Let's Encrypt. Yep, remember uh, when I created that uh, cluster issuer, uh, I used the uh, Let's Encrypt staging environment. So I got a staging certificate, which is not recognized uh, by my browser. So now we can go through the same steps again, uh, but to obtain a production certificate. So I'm going to edit my issuer here comment out okay let's change the name let's encrypt production make sure you have a valid email address here then let's comment out that server line and uncomment that one to use the production environment change the name of that secret here production okay now i can create that cluster issuer and now i can edit my certificate object and all I need to do is say that I want let's encrypt production instead kubectl apply and now uh, let's encrypt is going to do the whole dance again you see like we have this um, CA SCME HTTP solver except now this should be a little bit 
faster than before because earlier uh, we mostly had to wait for the DNS record to come up but yep that shouldn't be the case now because now we have the DNS record uh, and if we look again yep the ingress is gone if I take a look at the secrets um, okay, that doesn't show me that this secret, secret was updated, but let's just come back here, hit reload, and yeah, you can see that we have the welcome to Nginx page, and we have the padlock here that tells us that everything is fine, um, and if we look at the certificate, now this is using uh, the production Let's Encrypt environment. The reason why I did that little change, you know, like promoting from the staging environment to the production environment was to show that um, I, I, I change my cert manager certificate object. I say, I basically, I said, hey, you know the certificate we got earlier? I changed my mind. I want to use this other issuer instead. Cert manager detected that it got me a new certificate, it put that new certificate in the associate key in the secret, and then traffic, my ingress controller, so the one that's actually fronting the TLS connections, noticed that the secret changed and it reconfigured itself to use that secret. So that whole chain kind of, uh, um, you know, went into action. I didn't need to touch a bunch of objects or restart a bunch of processes. I just updated that certificate and that kind of triggered a cascade of events leading to the correct certificate being installed. And it took about, what, 10, 15 seconds. Um, sometimes it's even faster. Sometimes it's not as fast because, as we saw earlier, we could have external delays like DNS propagation or things like that. But that's the general idea with Kubernetes. We update one of the objects and all the things that depend on that object are going to pick up that change, update themselves, reconfigure themselves, uh, and so on and so on. All right. One more thing uh, about Cert Manager and TLS ingresses uh, is that we can tell Cert Manager, hey, I would like you to automatically get a certificate uh, for, uh, for a particular ingress. And we do that with an annotation. And uh, okay, I, I don't have a particular example uh, in my slides, so let's try and improvise one real quick. Uh, let's say that I want to have uh, TLS for that juice, uh, the, the, the juice shop here. Um, so we need two things, basically. The first thing is that we need to enable TLS there. Uh, so I need to edit that ingress and put a TLS section. Um, and the second thing is that we need to add an annotation to tell Cert Manager, hey, see that ingress and that TLS information here? Please obtain a certificate for it. So we're going to start with um, adding the TLS section. Uh, so let's kubectl edit ingress juice. And here in the spec, I'm going to add TLS, um, and what's exactly the syntax? Do I have an example here? Yes, awesome. So TLS is going to be a list where I put the secret name. So I'm going to put juice.cloudnative.party, and then we have hosts, which is a list as well. Uh, and in host, juice.cloudnative.party, Okay, so I save and quit that. So now if I take a look here, we can see that there is port 443. So that's kind of a hint. Um, traffic is going to notice that. But if I connect with TLS at this point, I think, we're, yeah, we get an error. And if we look at the certificate, I think we're going to see a self-signed certificate from traffic. Yeah, that's the traffic default cert. That's basically traffic telling us, 
hey, um, you, you want me to use TLS here and you told me to use that secret like juice.cloudnativeparty um, except that secret does not exist. So I'm going to give you my default cert instead. Like, okay, so now we need to tell cert manager uh, to do its magic. And we do that, well, we can do that with an annotation. This annotation will look like this. So annotate ingress juice. And the exact annotation is going to be cert manager io slash cluster issuer. And here I put the name of the cluster issuer I want to use. So that could be let's encrypt staging or let's encrypt production. Let's encrypt production. So we do that. A few seconds later, we will see a new ingress here. So, whoops, here, sorry. That's the cert manager uh, ingress created by cert manager to do the whole song and dance with Let's Encrypt and obtain the certificate. And this should just take maybe 10 more seconds uh, before it's completed. There we go. Um, now, if I look at the secrets, I should have a secret juice.cloudnativeparty you can see that it's like six seconds old. Traffic will immediately notice and it's like, haha, now we have a secret. So now I can um, give you a proper cert. And so if I reload that page here, there we go. We don't have the warning anymore. And now our juice shop is served with the proper certificate. This little thing that we did with the annotation here, it doesn't look like much, but that's actually extremely powerful because that's a way to decouple components uh, from each other. You know, like instead of having to create that certificate YAML that I did earlier, I just have this one annotation. Um, and uh, this is a generic annotation. What I mean is that this is just seeing cluster issuer, let's encrypt production, I can use that same annotation everywhere. You know, like we could do something in bulk, kind of wholesale, like kubectl annotate ingress dash dash all with that annotation. And that would automatically obtain TLS certs for all our ingresses, as long as they have a TLS section uh, in, in their manifest. All right. And now we have everything we need to deploy GitLab and set up our CI CD pipeline. <laughs>